Welcome back, everybody. You know, I'm a little bit different kind of guy, and I like the cold weather. I like doing things in the outdoors, hunting and fishing and all that when it's cold. And tonight, it's snowing and blowing. It's a little winter wonderland out here, and I've got a hankering for some Colorado elk steaks. I've got my 36 inch griddle on high and don't adjust your screen because yes, that is snow coming down. I know, kind of being a sissy. I even put the patio heater on tonight. So here we go. I have elk backstrap steaks from this year's Colorado bull elk, my six by six. Now without a doubt, my favorite way to make elk steaks is to chicken fry them. You know, put them in uh, egg wash, and flour and fry them up uh, in a skillet. That is hands down my favorite way to prepare elk steaks. But tonight, I don't feel like messing with egg wash, egg batter. So we are going to season these and we are gonna coat them with flour and put them straight down on the griddle top in some oil. So without any further ado, let me wipe some of the snow off my cutting board. Have my uh, tenderizing mallet here. Let's pick some of these beautiful Colorado elk backstrap steaks up. And we'll go in for a snow tenderizing session. There we go, both sides. Now I cut these really thick, so I wanna make these nice and thin. Think about a chicken fried steak at your favorite restaurant. The name of the game is to tenderize those steaks, to break it down, to break apart those uh, muscles, and just make it a lot more tender. Now the snow is coming down. Like I just showed you, they are coated with snow. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover them with a little hand towel so they don't, you know, get too wet. Now my idea for these tonight is really simple, and I have not tested it yet, but I tell you what, when you break out your custom elk silverware, your elk flatware, pff, you are destined for greatness. So I have a little pan here with all-purpose flour, and I broke out the Blackstone Whiskey Burger seasoning. That's right, Whiskey Burger is not only for burgers, you can use this stuff on Colorado elk steaks. So the only thing left to do is take those elk steaks, put them down in my flour. We'll pat them down like so. Make sure we get a lot of flour on there. Oh yeah, look at that. Turn them over and do the same thing on the other side like that. Not wanting to waste any time, we'll come straight over to the griddle. Drop down my coating of olive and canola oil. This is again just to make sure that I maintain my seasoning on my griddle top. I always like to oil it before and after I cook. Then a little more oil where I'm going to put my steak. And then we'll go straight down with that beautiful looking Colorado elk steak. So this is a method that would be more akin to pan frying your steaks out in the field, only we're gonna do it on the back porch, quick and easy. You talk about lighting issues here, I'm cooking without a film crew. We have snow and cold, and it's nighttime here, so let's see. Oh yeah, right there, look at that, perfect. Just a little bit of color, and we're gonna flip that steak over. I know it's dark out here, but I hope that looks half as good as it really does in person. Again, you see you have that little bit of blood on top. It's time to flip right there perfect and you can just keep flipping those steaks like that two more steaks down over here and this is all you need to do to make elk steak perfection in just a few minutes whether on your back porch or in the field from the griddle to the plate wow there's some steam coming off of those steaks take a look at that. So let's cut into this. It's actually so tender you don't even need a fork. You could just rip it apart like that. Now you could put ketchup on this. 
you could smother gravy on it but we are just gonna hightail it into the house here and we're gonna have a salad with this kids might pull out some ketchup but here we go let's give it a try well that's good you're not really sacrificing anything by not using the egg wash man tenderizing a good seasoning like the whiskey burger organic Rocky Mountain elk steaks. Hey, listen, if you don't have elk, just use beef. Mmm. Maybe you have some deer steaks in the freezer. Wow. Oh my goodness. Check that out right there, everybody. That is a plate of goodness steaming in the Colorado snow. That's right, baby. Bringing back my memories as the Rocky Mountain Mead Hunter. Mm, this stuff is so good, so simple. It's just, you know, a little bit extra. You don't want to do just a normal plain steak, a little bit of flour, a little bit of seasoning, and you got that griddle going as hot as you can. Just a couple of minutes, maybe two, two and a half minutes on each side, three minutes tops, and there we go. Hopefully that looks as good as it looks here. I hear the dog barking inside, and the kids are hungry, so I better get in the house and feed the family. So thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more videos, and make sure you're watching my Let's Give It A Try show at Blackstone Products social media. Until next time, this is Todd. I'm saying praise the Lord and pass the chicken fried elk steaks. My wife just took that batch in the house, so I'm finishing the last batch here. I'm telling you what, I love cooking in the snow, baby. So God willing, I'll be bringing you a lot more snow cooking videos this winter. Uh, so my wife can help me with this one. Kim can help me with this one because sometimes I'm long-winded. I get a lot of cool gifts from people, from subscribers that send me really, really individualized gifts. You know, custom things that they've made that they're associated with. So cool. I want to shout out. <coughs> Ooh. I want to shout out. I'm getting broken up apparently. Cracked up. I want to shout out to uh, Ron Stebbing Stebing. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's from Indiana. Really cool guy. An older gentleman. And I say older. You know, he's in his 70s. I'm in my late 40s. Um, he watches my videos. Uh, in short, um, his wife passed away from cancer. He spent a lot of time in the hospital with her. He's a very gifted artist, uh, like a technical draftsman almost. He drew lots of the scenes from his wife's hospital window and various buildings that, you know, he restaurants that he ate at, etc. when he was going through that. Um, he came to Colorado last year, uh, this past summer, and he said he literally, he was telling his friend that he visited in Colorado, man, you know, Todd lives in Colorado, and he was blown away. They said they saw me in the Blackstone van on the highway. What a neat story. But he thanked me, and he said that, you know, I, in part, uh, inspired him to start griddling and whatnot after um, his wife passed away and he was very thankful and he sent me all these cool gifts I just want to show them to you right now all right so I don't know if I'll be able to show you all of these but check it out he showed me various pictures still shots of his griddle setup there right there's his griddle setup on the back porch uh, these are some pictures of a, I think a church that he visited while he was in Colorado with his wife um, there's some here that were all inspired by his wife's struggle. A restaurant at Carabas that he ate at near the hospital. Um, just the neatest pictures and the most beautiful drawings. I mean, this guy, Ron, is very, very talented. This is one right here that he calls a new day. On the back he says, uh, look out the third floor window of where my wife was in the hospital. And uh, he says, it's a view from heaven. So very heartfelt. And uh, another view, uh, another picture there of his griddle set up at the house. Some pictures of uh, Ron with his wife, with his late wife. And he also did these really cool etchings. Check this out. These are etched onto some kind of a plexi type of glass there. Uh, my various logos, so check it out. But these are absolutely beautiful and such talent. Um, from Ron here, here's my old Rocky Mountain Meat Hunter, praise the Lord, past the elk logo right there. And check it out, he even went ahead. This is, I mean, he blew my mind. He did my uh, my new Let's Give It A Try logo. Shout out to Jason and Blackstone's graphic design department who drew that. Ron is your new partner in crime there. And of course, uh, my catchphrase here, which isn't only a catchphrase, you know. I, the reason why I did it was because I do want to praise the Lord and everything I do even made me praise the Lord and even sent us really cool handmade Thanksgiving and Christmas cards so Ron wasn't looking for a shout out but I'm giving him a shout out anyway it's really cool and such such a neat thing um, you know been on uh, YouTube for 12 years and uh, that's the coolest thing 
Um, I've made so, so many personal connections and every day I meet the coolest people and, and to this day, you know, some of my, my closer friends and my neatest buddies, our family friends, my friend Steve, my hunting buddy, I met through my YouTube channel and, um, you know, we have various friends like the Pierce family, the Pierces, uh, that we met through our YouTube channel as well. That's probably just about it for now.